This is Mike with Open Heaven Inspiration. Welcome. Welcome and thank you for joining me on this Pentecost Sunday. Today I'm going to do something just a little bit different while everybody is coming in. I'm going, I've got a friend with me here, my guitar, and I'm going to spend a little bit of time singing and praising the Lord with you. nothing like the love of God, is there? I uh, want to welcome. We have uh, several people that have joined me already. I see Bonnie. I know if I see Bonnie, Delbert's with him. So hello to both of you. Libby, great to see you again. Uh, you've been faithful to this broadcast. Uh, Trisha, good to see you again as well. And looks like we've got, um, um, we might have one more person coming in. So just want to say uh, one more time, uh, I'm thrilled to have every one of you with us as we celebrate this Pentecost Sunday. Um, today, I believe that God just wants to love on us with his word, and he wants to expand our territory. Um, you know, the day of Pentecost, um, which I think most of us are familiar with in, in, chapters, in chapter 2 of the book of Acts, was really the day that the church was birthed. Um, we, you know, we know the story. They were, they were 120 disciples had been praying in, in an upper room, waiting for the promise of, of Jesus, that he said the Holy Spirit would come. And on that particular day, when there was a, a mighty rushing wind, that they were filled with boldness. They came out of hiding and they answered a call to action. And I really believe that the, this Pentecost that we're celebrating right now, it's, it's, like, that, it's like that day of Pentecost. Uh, God is birthing and, and God is birthing new things in the church today. If nothing else, he's birthed many internet ministries, but I know there's, that that's really just the tip of the iceberg. And so um, it's a time again, it's a call to action to take a hold of our God-given assignments and to run with it. That's been a theme of this, uh, this Facebook Live ministry from the very beginning. And, uh, and so um, I want to, before I take the next step, I want to say a big thank you to Archbishop Anthony Jones. I met Bishop Jones a couple of years ago at a Kairos, Archbishop Anthony Jones. He's been a great blessing in my life. And, and over the past couple of months, just partaking of his Facebook Live, doing what he does like we're doing today has really enriched my walk with God. So uh, thank you. Um, now today, I always like to talk a little bit about interaction. So let us know where you're, everybody's saying hello. If anybody wants to let me know where they're from, that's great too. And uh, something that's more important today is this is a really a good day to ask questions. 
And I'll tell you something about me. I get a lot of answers by asking questions. Sometimes at work or with a friend, I'll ask them a question and they don't even have to answer me and I get my answer. I've found the same thing with God. You know, a couple weeks ago, I was in the Word and I had a question. So, and so I, sometimes I write these things down on my phone so I won't forget. And I, um, so I wrote it down on my phone and as I was writing it down on my phone, the Holy Spirit gave me the answer. So if you're wired like I am, uh, I encourage you to ask questions. You'll get more out of this and we'll have more fun with this. I, my goal with Facebook, with this Facebook Live ministry has never been a one-way dialogue. I want to interact with you. I believe that, that we're two or more gathered. And when there's interaction, God can move in a greater way. So um, as we get into this today, I want to let you know this is really one of my favorite subjects in the world. And, I, and God just prompted me today to remind all of you how much God loves you. He truly does. And because he loves you, he wants to communicate with you. And God is a very good communicator. He just happened to be the person who designed communication, so he knows a whole lot about it. Um, so getting to know the voice of, of God is really getting to know God, getting to know his heart for us and his heart for mankind. Um, our brothers and sisters of every nationality, every creed, and every race. God, the God we serve, he's a big God with a big heart. And I truly believe that as we explore this subject of getting to know his voice, that God will expand our vision of ourselves, that he'll expand our vision of the world around us. The kingdom of God is always advancing and God wants us to advance with it. Can I get an amen on, the, on this Facebook Live show today? I know not everybody is a Presbyterian. Love the Presbyterians, but that was a little joke. So um, the other thing I want to say about the voice of God is learning the voice of God is an adventure. In Jeremiah chapter 33, verses 3 through 5, uh, he, the prophet Jeremiah said, ask me, and I will tell you remarkable secrets uh, that you do not know about things to come. As we get to know his voice and as we call out to him for answers, not just looking to the news or looking to our neighbor, but calling out to him and expecting the God that he loves us to answer us, um, we'll get the inside story about things that haven't even happened yet. Is that something to rejoice about or what? I rejoice when God tells me my tomorrow before I get there. Now, uh, some, I believe, that are on this broadcast, whether, it's, whether you're listening right now or you're going to watch it on, a, on a, the replay, feel like God has been giving you the silent treatment because you hear people talking about all these ways that God has led them and guided them, and you feel like you're hearing crickets. But I believe that by the end of this broadcast today, you're going to see things differently. So last week, we laid a foundation. And um, one of the questions I asked, and I, one of the b basics was simply that, that knowing the voice of God is a privilege of every believer. But I also asked another question of whether or not the word promised that he would speak to unbelievers. And I want to give a shout out right now to my great friend, Larry Green. If Larry Green's watching out there, you, we won't know it because he likes to lay low when it comes to Facebook Live. But I want to give a shout out to him because he corrected me on my answer. Last week, I said there were no promises in the Word about God speaking to unbelievers, but actually there are. 
In Matthew chapter 11, verse 23, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke, which means my teachings and my precepts, my principles, upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and lowly in heart. What is So yes, God promises to speak to even unbelievers. And what does he do? He calls them and he woos him. Uh, the scripture also says in 644, in John 644, he says, and this is out of the amplified version because I like the way it expands it. But it says, no one is able to come to me unless the father who sent me attracts and draws him and gives him the desire to come to me. So that's God speaking. Now, some of us might hear that voice and say, well, what's God saying? What's God saying here? And, and this is a great scripture to lead us into where we're going today. God doesn't just communicate to us with words. God communicates to us non-verbally. You know, when it comes to communications, there was a study done many years ago that showed that when it comes to human communications, that a very small percent, we can't, we, this is not a great format for me to do a quiz yet, but, but let me say this. Um, sometimes I've asked friends, what percent of communication is verbal? I'll hear 10, 20, maybe 30%. But the truth is that when it comes to human communication, 1% is verbal. The rest is nonverbal. So for all of you out there who have only been looking to hear the voice of God in specific words, there's a whole nother world of communication that he has to offer you. So um, my question to you, and I would like your response and your involvement today, just so we can connect, is how many of you hear from God on a regular basis? I'm going to give you a moment, and I know that there's typically about a minute delay here, but I'm going to give you just a moment. Um, everybody that's watching today, even if you haven't identified yourself, uh, let's be valiant soldiers, those of you who like to lay quiet on these sessions, and let's, let's chime in. Let us know if God speaks to you on a regular basis. Okay. So, um, Thank you for those of you that are answering. I say that by faith, and I see one person popped in there. Um, so there are actually many ways that God speaks to us. And by the way, Shauna Thomas, uh, Th Shauna, it's great to see you. I've seen you on a lot of shows that I love to watch, and it's an honor to have you on this show with me, with me and the rest of us today. I really do appreciate everybody connecting. But uh, there are many ways that God speaks to us. And I'm familiar with a minister named Steve Thompson who does conferences around the country um, teaching people how to hear from the Holy Spirit. And typically it's a, like a two or three day conference. And at the beginning of the conference, he asked the very question that I asked. And typically 10% of the people respond to say, Yes, I hear from God on a regular basis. But by the end of the conference, when he's explained all the ways that God communicates with us, the other 90% realized that God was talking to him. God was talking to them the whole time. They just didn't know it. So this is where we dive in now, and, and, and i get going to get very practical with you. And again, your questions are welcome. So the first way that God speaks to us is through his written word. This is known in Greek as his logos word. So every time we read the Bible, every time we open that book and look at the pages, God is talking. And I'll give you a practical example from my life. A long time ago, when I graduated college, 
I owed my parents some money. And you notice how when we talk about things that we're not proud about, it's always way, way, way in the past. And when it's something we're excited about, we say it was yesterday. But um, anyway, but this is true. When I graduated from college, um, I owed my parents some money and I was taking my time paying them back until one day I happened to be reading in the book of Psalms and I saw Psalms chapters 37 verse 21 that says the wicked borrow and do not repay. Well, <laughs> suffice it to say that hit me right where it needed to and I got to paying them. I paid them back as quickly as I could. And I think we all can see that. I have another friend that I, I, I really appreciate and value that uh, has not totally gotten a hold of the, the concept of tithing. And I always point them back to the Bible, even if, because sometimes they say, well, God hasn't talked to me about tithing. And my answer is always, it's in the word. Every time you see it in the word, he's talking to you. Okay. So, that, so then that's the first one. The second one is a knowing. A knowing can be, so, so I'm going to just uh, go through these really quickly and then I'm going to dive in deeper. So there's the Bible, there's knowings, there's inner knowings, there's feelings, there's seeing, and there is hearing. Now, some folks might break this down uh, with more ways or less ways. But I think it's interesting that the way that, that I'm looking at it today and that many look at it is the number five, which is the number for grace. And uh, really, when we're tuned into God, we know, we know his mind and we know his heart, it brings a greater grace in our life. So we've talked about the Bible. We've talked about knowing just a little bit. So as I said, it's an inner knowing. And I want to give you an example of this from my life. Uh, about five weeks ago, uh, five or six weeks ago, a uh, great friend of mine, uh, Pastor John Burgess from Brighton Congregational Church in Ashland, invited me on his Facebook Live show. And we just had a blessed time together. And afterwards, he encouraged me to get into a Facebook Live ministry myself. Now, you know, that's, that is not a small endeavor for anyone. If you don't believe that, try it. Um, but something that came on top of that, which nudged me to know that God was speaking, was I had an inner knowing. God gave me an understanding that uh, I'm a person who's been in the ministry for well over 20 years. And um, when you have a public speaking ministry etiquette, is to wait for invitations. Um, but, what I, but what God showed me after that experience, what God showed me after that experience is that, that I was looking now at an open door. This Facebook Live ministry was a door that God had opened for me and I needed to walk in it. Um, let's talk about the next one. Uh, feeling. A feeling can just be, uh, as I said, an emotion. Um, it can be an emotion from God that, 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 just, that just takes you over sometimes, that is so strong. Um, and then there's seeing. And there's a lot more to say about seeing. Uh, seeing can be an inner vision or an outer vision. So an inner vision is when you just kind of see a picture in your mind. An outer vision could, could just be when you're, you know, out about your daily life or, you know, in any kind of waking moment and you physically see something that you know is not physically there. You know it, you're seeing into the spiritual realm. So that is an outer vision. And then there are, um, there are surround visions when people are just completely immersed in things. I haven't experienced that yet. Um, there are night visions, which is when you see something while you are sleeping. And then finally, there are dreams. And there is a distinction here. You know, in Joel chapter 2, verse 228, uh, it said, uh, the prophet said, your old men will dream dreams 
and your young men will see visions. Now he wasn't, the prophet was not saying that, that only that, that he wasn't saying that, uh, he wasn't tying that to a chronological age. He was talking about maturity. So he was saying that a young believer is more likely to see a dream in the night, which is literal, whereas a more mature believer is, is more likely to receive visions, which take a, a greater depth of understanding to, to process and to interpret. Now, you may have heard something totally different, but something I like to say on these broadcasts is that truth is like a diamond. It has many different facets. So if I show you a different facet of the diamond than you see, um, just take it and consider it because it could bring a reflection of greater grace and understanding in your life. And so uh, the final uh, way that we hear from God, which I mentioned, and I want to explore a little bit, is the words that we hear. And that can be inaudible, which is more common with me and with most people, where you just have a thought that crosses your mind and you begin to understand when those thoughts are from God and when they're from another source. But it can also be audible. And I know that I have a dear friend on the line here uh, named Delbert uh, Brennan, who actually has audibly heard the voice of God. Isn't that amazing? If you've audibly heard the voice of God, um, please chime in and let us know. So something I like to do to make this practical is to give you a real life example that ties into this ministry of how uh, these things are combined. So sometimes when God is speaking to us, he will speak to us through many different methods. Most of us, I, I believe, were blessed to see the interview that I did with Wayne Allen and uh, Bill Bennett a few weeks ago from Shannon 54 in South Africa. Um, I, I've shared this before on my broadcast, so I will keep this brief, um, but I met uh, uh, an, an American who, had a, who has a church in South Africa who's had one for many years, met him last year at a conference, then a month or two ago found out about a COVID-19 relief effort taking place in South Africa. Um, shortly thereafter, I was connected with the person who was over that organization. Well, from the beginning of hearing about this effort, there was, I experienced a feeling. There was a tugging on my heart. And, and especially once I connected with Wayne Allen, who is over that ministry, it grew. Something inside of me, and it was a strong feeling, said, what can I do with this Facebook Live ministry to bless that effort? So it started with a feeling. And then one night, a, couple, a week or two later, I wasn't sleeping well, and so I just got up and spent some time with the Lord. Well, during that time, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me about Wayne Allen, wonderful, powerful things about this man of God. And as, we, uh, as I interacted with him, the things that God had showed me were confirmed. And we're going to talk about confirmation today if we have time, because that's a really important part of hearing the Word of God. But so I had a feeling, I had a hearing, and then one day I had an inner vision. And in this inner vision, it was just momentary, but it was, but I saw Wayne Allen on this Facebook Live broadcast. Now, at that time and, and to this point in time, I haven't, I haven't set up the technology to do interviews, so I didn't know how this was going to happen. But I reached out to Wayne and found out that he had his own media services company, um, and the rest is history. We saw them together a few weeks ago, and I think we were all blessed. So I give this example to let you know how the different ways that God speaks to us, they can work together, they can, and they can bring, bring confirmation. But the, the beauty of it all is the adventure. There's such a great adventure for us all out there as we learn to know and to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit.
so some of this thing may, these things may sound very different to you. And, and I think, and, and like say for example, that, that you're a person who has a lot of dreams, but you've never audibly heard the voice of God. Or maybe you're a person that when you read the Bible, God just talks to you that way and you've never had a dream, you've never seen a vision. Sometimes there's a human tendency in us to look askance or to look kind of oddly at people who are really strong in an area that we're not familiar with. Um, I can give you an example. A few years ago, there was a lady that I worked with, a Christian lady, and we were having lunch one day and I was just sharing some things about the Lord. And, and after I had shared them, she showed me a piece of paper and she had been drawing a picture that she was seeing in her mind as I was sharing this. So she was a seer and I'd never really encountered a person who just did that in their everyday life. But the reason it's important for us to appreciate all these things is uh, it's, it's underscored in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where it says very simply, and I'm just gonna kind of cut to the chase in this verse, but it says, if the ear says, I am not part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? Or if the whole body would an, were an eye, would you hear? Because he says, if the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? Or if your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? So in other words, we shouldn't push the people off the side who experience God differently than us, but we also shouldn't feel left out. Let's say you've got a friend that has a dream or a vision every week, and you, you, know, you wake up in the morning and you know, you're just happy to have a good night rest, and that's it. That's okay because God brings all the different parts of the body together and we enhance each other. But I will say that as you appreciate the gifts of others, God can also unfold those different ways of communicating with you. Now, a question I think that a lot of us might ask is why don't we hear more about this in the body of Christ? And I think the most basic answer is that it goes against the grain of Western thinking. And I think that unfortunately, a lot of Western, th Western thought has crept into the church in America. Um, ultimately, the Western uh, uh, mindset says that God does not get involved um, in the life of a believer. And he doesn't do things in the supernatural realm, that that was in a good book 2,000 years ago, but it's not for today. I believe that's a big reason, but I also believe another reason we don't hear more about it is because there's challenges. And if a person tries something and it doesn't go well or make them look good, um, if they're a leader of a church or a movement, sometimes they just back off and they move on and they move on to other things. Um, you know, uh, when I was five years old, I remember uh, on my birthday, my dad gave me what was to him a very special gift. He gave, me my first, he gave me my first bicycle. Now, I don't know what I was wanting that year, but a bicycle was not on the list. Um, so I smiled and I said, thank you. And several days later, um, I think it was dad got me on that bike to try to teach me how to learn it. And I was terrible. I was a nervous wreck and I was embarrassed. And so I didn't touch that bike for about two years. In the meantime, one of my siblings took a hold of it and we had a lot of fun watching him learn. But after uh, a year or so, I came out of the back door into the garage one afternoon and I looked at that bike and I said, I'm gonna ride that thing. I hopped on that thing and rode it like, like a, you know, a semi-pro, okay? And enjoyed it for years and years and years. So even though hearing the voice of God, acting on the voice of God may be clumsy or embarrassing or uncomfortable at first, doesn't mean that it's not a great area for all of us to explore. You know, um, I have one thing that I have learned and I, I shared it on an earlier broadcast is what I call the law of firsts. Uh, many times, the first time we try something will be the worst time that we tried it. And if we're not careful, we won't pursue the thing. And uh, Paul talked about that. 
In Romans chapter 7, verse 21, he says, I have discovered this principle of life, that when I want to do right, I inevitably do wrong. So uh, in spite of that, we should persevere. When anytime we're learning something, there's going to be successes, there's going to be failures. But to remind you, because this is about relationship with God, we never want to give up and we want to continue to move forward. You know, if we look at human relationships, uh, friendships can be tough, uh, marriage can be tough, family relations, all these things that are so essential to us and are, and are so got such great God-given benefits can be very challenging at times. But by God's grace, we pursue them and we learn uh, more about them. Um, I want to share one more thing before we just hop into dissecting this a little bit uh, more. And that is, uh, actually, I'll save this for later. I just looked at our time. So I'll save this for later. But uh, something I want to do is uh, talk about in the time that we have left today, uh, testing and discerning. When you feel like God is trying to tell you something, how do we discern uh, whether or not that's really him? So um, anytime you have uh, a nudge or an impression or a leading from God, it can come from one of three different sources. I said God, but anytime we, we get any kind of impression or idea or feeling or a knowing, it can come from one of three sources. There is sim very simply, it can come from God, it can come from our fleshly nature, or it can come from the devil. In other words, a, a demonic spirit. So it can come from one of three sources. Now, the first source I wanna talk about, obviously, is, is God. And in Psalms chapter 12, verse six, it says, the words of the Lord are pure words like silver tried in a furnace of the earth, purified seven times. When God has spoken to you, that word will not fail. It may not time out or play out the way that we think it's going to always, but it's a pure word and it's for our benefit. If that word affects others, it's for their benefit as well. Um, and Jeremiah 29, uh, verse 11 says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. When it's God speaking to you, if, we, if you follow it, and we'll talk about following and unpacking him, it will lead to good plans for your life. Um, Next, next source that we can hear is the voice of the flesh or the carnal nature. Um, Romans, 8, chap Romans chapter 8, verse 7 says, For the mind of the flesh is always hostile to God. It never did obey God's laws, and it never will. So when, when you're getting some kind of a leading when you're getting some kind of a leading that is fleshly, many times it will counteract the word of God. It will counteract something that you know is part of your life. You know, we're made in God's image, so we can have a lot of good ideas. People around you can have a lot of good ideas, but it's for us to test and to try and find out if those good ideas are God ideas. In other words, it's good, but is it best and is it his perfect will for our life? Because that's what we all want. And um, the other thing about the carnal nature is that we have a voice of understanding. And sometimes the voice of our own understanding can, that our own understanding can take on a voice and it can sound like God is speaking. Um, and, and one thing for sure, so, so this is a, you know, a lot of things there in the fleshly realm. We know about worldly wisdom. Um, we know that it, that it can be corrupt. Uh, it can be fearful, selfish. And one thing for sure is that when you're a carnal man, when your own understanding is speaking, 
it will limit God every time. You know, one, one saying I have is that when I'm seeking God for an answer, my litmus test or my measure uh, is that when I hear something that was the last thing that I ever would have thought of more times than not, that's the Holy Spirit talking because the Bible says that his ways are higher than our ways as the heavens are above the earth. And I think that we're out of time. So I'm going to uh, pick this up next week. Um, but I'd like to do two things before we finish. Uh, first of all, uh, I'm going to pray us out here in a moment. Um, but if you enjoyed this message today, uh, I encourage you to be a media, me media missionary and share it with someone else. So Father, we just thank you, God, for this time of connection we have. I thank you, God, for every saint and every servant of yours, and even maybe those that are just curious, God, if you're real and if you have a plan for their life. I thank you, God, for everybody that has joined this broadcast today. Father, I pray that you would open up the eyes of our heart today. Open up our eyes to know your love your provision, and your protection that is promised to us, Father. God, I pray I cast down all fear, God, regarding the subject of hearing your voice. We were designed to walk with you. We were designed to commune with you, seeing you, hearing you, knowing you, feeling you. So, Father, I pray open up the eyes of our heart, and I would say the ears, and the knowers today. In your precious, faithful name we pray, amen. I love you all, and I will see you next week. We were going to talk about, uh, and we did talk about Pentecost. So I love you all, and I'll see you next week.